So we're here at For the Love of Horror, and Jason, I know that they screened The Lost Boys last night. You were there on stage watching it with the audience. First of all, what was that experience like? Because it stood the test of time. Everyone here is a huge, huge fan of that film. Well, it was funny because I didn't know I was going to watch the movie, and um, and they wanted me to comment in between, and then we had some people up there. But literally 10 minutes in the movie, if you looked out, which I did, everyone was on the edge of their seats, and you sort of didn't want to interrupt it for them. So, you know, give a few tidbits and everything. But it just shows you because everyone in that in that audience had probably seen it 100 times anyway. But it, just, it does hold up. Being here at For the Love of Horror with Monopoly Events, it's reunited the cast, yourself, Kiefer, Billy, Alex, uh, G. Tom Mack as well, you know, pivotal part of that film as well with the soundtrack. What's it like reuniting with everyone? And are these the types of days where you're like, I'm so glad on that sixth time when I said I wasn't going to do the film that I, that I made the decision to do it? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the best thing to be able to hang out and see guys you haven't seen in a long time. And, and to meet uh, people that... You know, the movie's become bigger than anyone could imagine, and uh, it means a lot to their childhoods and their growing up. So, yeah, I mean, of course, I'm glad that I did it. But, you know, it became something different because I did do it. You know, I've always said before, the original script was garbage. So it was more Joel Schumacher and what he really wanted to do, and we were doing things that hadn't been done before. So it was, it was tricky, but that's that's what made it challenging. And, you know, on set those first few weeks, how blown away were you with the costume design? Because Joel had obviously a huge background in the fashion industry, so he knew what that side of things was about. But I'm guessing when you saw it, you was like, wow, I've not seen outfits like this before. And we're going to be remembered in cinematic history for the outfits alone. Well, they were. I, w I was the boring one in jeans and a T-shirt. But so they all look cool. You had the Jim Morrison hair, though. Yeah, but you know it wasn't designed. It's was <laughs> me being lazy, you know. Because Jim Morrison, his picture is in in the uh, vampire cave, isn't it? And we do have a prop of that out there. And I always thought that. I thought whether that was something that was by design that you were made to look like Jim, and whether that was like a sign of the rock and roll nature of the characters and the film. But was that just your hair at the time? That was just me, and then someone put a poster up. Well, it was, it was a very, very cool look. And I know that Joel said that the the sort of camaraderie on set, at some points it was like a non-stop rave. You know, you were all very young at the time. What what was that experience like? It seems like you all had like a ton, a ton of fun. Yeah, I mean, I think those guys had more fun than me and had certain uh, substances that helped them have more fun. Um, I just I felt a lot of pressure a lot of time because I'm in it more than everybody else and I have to sort of balance the supernatural and the family stuff and all that back and forth and and as I said that you know, we were rewriting the scenes every day and all that so um, I, you know, I was, it, to me it was just it was work we had fun because I liked the people but it wasn't crazy for me they, those guys had better stories was it a relief for you watching it on the big screen for the first time? Because, you know, you were apprehensive going into the film. See the final product and see the effect it's had on cinema all these years later. There's still not a better vampire film out there. No. Uh, yeah, I can, you know, when, when it first came out, I was still young. So it's hard to sort of see yourself in general. Now, it's so many years past, I can look at it more objectively and just look at how it's it's just beautifully shot. It's it, every piece of every technical aspect of the movie top of the line and we were doing things that hadn't been done so the fact that it still holds up and it doesn't look dated and everything's practical and real and there's no cgi bullshit exactly that, that's uh that's a testament to the people that, that put it together i know a lot of you guys did the motorcycle stunts yourself uh Kiefer got a bit too into it he broke his wrist uh, during the filming was that to impress a girl i heard as well he was trying to impress a girl yeah the story changes uh <laughs> depending on the year, depending on the keeper's <laughs> mood. But yeah, apparently it was about around the first day and he did something and he fell down and he cracked his wrist. And that's why David wears gloves yeah. because uh, they had put a, I guess like a, they had to mold some kind of plastic thing on him. And were you at the point after the shoot where you like, right, I'm done with like the horror side of things for a bit? Or would you have, if Joel approached you and said, look, I'm, I'm going to do a sequel. I want to continue the, the story that we've we've started in the first one, would you have been up for that? And were you ever approached for a sequel? Yeah, I, w I probably wouldn't have done it. I mean, I, I made very different movies after that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't make teen movies after that. Um, uh, and I thought that the, the, the best movies and the movies that last, they have a, an arc that completes itself. 
You know, I mean, Jaws is the perfect movie. Then they make four more. I mean, there's yeah. no reason it's perfect because it completes the story just like a book. So I, I wouldn't have been interested in that, no. And finally, just to see how the film has been passed through generations. You know, get, couples will have met watching the film. Yeah. Relationships will have formed through a love of the film. Just to see how it's built families and been passed through generations. You, you, you'll have heard all the stories from the fans here today. I, I can speak for myself. My dad showed me the film on VHS when I was a very young boy, and I absolutely fell in love with it from that moment on. Well, I think that's the, what's unique and singular about uh, Lost Boys. I mean, parents frequently show their kids movies they grew up with, but it's usually just to bide their time or to occupy them. This movie, people seem to really want to share with their children um, because it meant so much to them growing up. And ultimately, yes, it's vampires and all that, but it's a, it's a brothers. It's two brothers. And so I think everybody has that familial sense. And also it's an outsider story and coming of age and all that. And then all the wonderful stuff that Joel put around it. So it seems that uh, people have a very emotional connection to it. And uh, I really only started realizing that when I started doing a few of these, um, these conventions because people express how much it meant to them. It really does. It means a hell of a lot to a lot of people in all corners of the world. So just uh, know that and uh, enjoy the interactions with the fans this weekend. Everyone's so excited to meet you and really appreciate the time. No Thank you.